Day 29, 4.5, Integration by Substitution, Part 1. So what we're going to look at today is still integrating, okay, but we'll have to make a substitution at some point. So we'll talk about how that works. So just as a reminder, if we have a composite function, f of g of x, and we want to take the derivative of it, we have to remember the chain rule. We take the derivative of the outside function, and we keep the inside, and then the chain rule is taking the derivative of the inside function. So now if we want to integrate, remember that f prime is our outside function, the g is our inside function, and g prime is the derivative of our inside function. So then we just work in reverse, and we get f of g of x. And we can't forget the plus c now because this isn't a definite integral. So this leads us to our theorem, the anti-differentiation of a composite function. So if g is a function whose range is on interval i, and f is a function that is continuous on that interval, if g is differentiable on its domain, and f is an antiderivative of little f on that i, that interval, then we can go ahead and say that the integral of f of g of x times g prime of x is equal to big F of g of x plus c. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to give a we're going to let u be this g of x, this inside function. So then du is the derivative of that, and this just gives us our substitution. It's going to make a lot more sense when we go through some examples. So let's look at this first example. Let's integrate the following. So if we look at part a, we want to integrate x cubed or the integral of x cubed times the square root of x to the fourth plus 5 dx. So the biggest thing is to, to recognize, well, what should we let u be? And then when we take the derivative of that, are we left with the other portion? So essentially, we want the u and the du portion to cover this entire thing. So let's talk about that. Let's go ahead and let u be this inside x to the fourth plus five. Why would we want that to happen? Well, if we let u be x to the fourth plus five, then what's the derivative? So du represents the derivative. So what's the derivative of x to the fourth plus five? It just gives us four x cubed dx. So that takes care of the x cubed and the dx, but we have to get that portion by itself. So if we divide both sides by 4, so I can say 1 fourth du equals x cubed dx. Okay, so now we can make a substitution. Instead of x to the fourth plus 5, we have u. Instead of x cubed dx, we have 1 fourth du. So this is going to look like the following. Okay, so then our integral of x cubed times the q or square root of x to the fourth plus five dx. Okay, where now that's going to be our u, and x cubed dx is going to be our one fourth du. Okay, so it's going to look like this. It's going to equal the integral of the square root of u times one-fourth du, okay? And the reason we do this is because now it's a lot easier to integrate. So we can clean this up. I can bring that one-fourth out front, and really what we have here is u to the one-half du. So let's go ahead and integrate this, right? So when we do, we are at one-fourth times two-thirds u, oops, sorry, two-thirds, not two u, two-thirds u to the three-halves. And now since this isn't a definite integral, we need that plus c at the end. And now the last thing we do is we substitute back in. So we clean this up, and we are essentially left with uh, one-sixth Instead of u, we have x to the fourth plus 5 raised to the 3 halves plus c. And here is what our 
answer looks like. Okay? So that's a U substitution for integration. Let's try this next example. The integral of 3x squared cosine x cubed. So sometimes the hardest part is figuring out what the substitution should be. Okay, so let's take a look and think about this. All right, if we have this piece be the f prime of g of x, right, then this piece right here looks like g prime of x, right, the derivative of g. So if we let u be this x cubed, then what's the derivative going to be? Then du is going to equal 3x squared dx. So that covers this portion, right? That's our du, and here is our u portion. So what does that leave us with? That seems to work out very nicely. So if we were to continue on now, we could go ahead and make our substitution, right? So if we have the integral of 3x squared times the cosine of x cubed dx, substituting in, we now have the cosine of u, and this 3x squared dx is our du. We can integrate the cosine of u, that's simply the sine of u, and now the last thing we have to do is make our substitution back to get our final answer of the sine of x squared, x cubed plus c. Example C, the integral of cosine cubed of 2x times the sine of 2x. All right, I'm going to give you a second to think about what you should let u be equal to, which then in turn gives you what du is going to be. Take the derivative and see what you get. Okay, so what's the answer? Well, if we let u equal the cosine of 2x, right? And typically when we're thinking about a u substitution, if I have a whole quantity being raised to a power, that quantity tends to be what u is equal to, okay? And we'll talk about that further in class. So then if u is cosine of 2x, what does that leave du to be? Well, that would mean du is equal to negative sine of 2x, but we can't forget about the chain rule, so times 2 dx. So what do we have? We have negative 2 sine of 2x dx. But in order to get just the sine of 2x dx, we need to divide both sides by negative 2. So we really get negative 1 half du is equal to sine of 2x dx. So what I want you to do is I want you to finish off the problem, make your u substitution, and see what you get in the end. Okay, did you get what I got? So if cosine of 2x is u, then we end up with the integral of u cubed. Sine of 2x dx is equal to negative 1 half du. And now when we clean this up and we go through our integration, the last thing we need to do is then substitute back. So remember, it's cosine to the fourth power of 2x. Don't forget your plus c. If you have questions, make sure you ask in class. Let's move on to the next examples. This next example is still talking about the differential equation and remember slope fields, okay? So if we want to sketch two approximate solutions of the differential equation, one of which passes through the given point. Well, I already drew that, all right? I might be a little off, but remember the rules. We have to go from edge to edge and we follow those slopes. So see if you can go ahead and just draw another possibility and then um, we'll move on. So there was mine. I just shifted everything up. Um, I probably should have ended further on the edge. And there we have it. Let's go ahead now and solve this differential equation for the particular solution. 
Okay, so part B says use integration to find the particular solution for this differential equation. So just a quick reminder, if this is our differential equation, if I multiply both sides by dx, we end up with dy is equal to 5x times the cube root of 1 minus x squared dx. And then when we take the integral of both sides, the integral of dy is simply y. And so we're left with this equation that we need to solve for. So we want to solve for what y is. Okay, so we need to make a u substitution. So I'm going to give you a second to see if you can come up with what your u should be and what your du should be. And we'll check back in just a second. Okay, so I said, let's let u be 1 minus x squared. So then if we take the derivative of that, we get du to be negative 2x dx. And so that's just giving us x dx is equal to negative 1 half du. So that takes care of this piece here, the x and the dx, and it takes care of what's inside of that radical. Now, because this 5 is a constant, we could just pull that out front. Okay, so let's continue on and see what this looks like. All right, so when we make that u substitution, we've got something like this, okay? So that 5 is just a constant, so it's no big deal, all right? We substituted u for 1 minus x squared to the 1 third, rewrote it, makes it easier, and then we have negative 1 half du. So clean this up, integrate it, and see what you get for the general equation. So hopefully you were able to work through this without too much uh, difficulty. So those constants just come out, and now we're integrating u to the 1 third. So that integrates as 3 fourths u to the 4 thirds. Don't forget about your plus c. And now we substitute back. So we have our general equation of negative 15 eighths times 1 minus x squared to the 4 thirds plus c. But now it's time to find the particular solution through that point. So to get to the particular equation with um, the original slope field, the original passing through the point 1, 1, we're going to plug in 1, 1 for our x and y in our general equation to solve for that c value. So as we go through, and we go through our calculations, double check me, we should get c to be 1. So then we just have to substitute back into our general equation to get our particular. So we get y is equal to negative 15 eighths times the quantity 1 minus x squared to the 4 thirds plus 1. So all in all, here's everything that we did. Okay, if you do have any questions on uh, u subs, make sure you come to class with those next time.